and welcome to the channel. What you have just seen in the intro of this video was me traveling all over Europe for about 90 days covering over 3,800 kilometers. I have been traveling with the paraglider and with my tent, having the biggest adventure of my life. So I have had countless nights in the tent. Therefore, I am now here to give you some advice on how you can have as well cozy, comfortable nights in the tent and a good night rest. So, let's dive right into it. There are a couple of very important factors that you should take in consideration when you want to go out camping. And all these factors are divided into two groups. The one group includes the physical factors, and the second group includes the psychological factors. So let's start with the physical factors, which include your camping gear. First of all, you are going to need a tent. I can tell you right now, it doesn't have to be the craziest, fanciest uh, or most expensive brand out there. It can also be a cheaper brand. For example, I bought this tent a couple of years ago for just 55 euros on Amazon. I have spent over 90 days in this tent and I have had bad weather, severe wind, severe storms, heavy rain and it has done a great job. Another very important piece of equipment that some beginners might forget to bring with them is an insulating layer between your sleeping pad and the tent floor. All my advice I am giving you in this video is based on my own personal experiences and believe me it's going to be very very helpful. This protective layer has helped me a ton. For example I noticed the camping grounds were full of sharp stones or twigs or even the grass was so rigid and the stem was poking and perforating through my tent floor and therefore I used this underneath the tent or sometimes I used it inside the tent on the floor first and just after that when I noticed that the sharp objects cannot perforate through the uh, insulating layer as well then I took my sleeping pad and I inflated it on top of this layer. Alright, let's move on now to the next very important piece of equipment, which is your sleeping pad or a sleeping mattress, the way you want to call it. One of the most important things you should pay attention to when you are buying a sleeping pad is its R value. Roughly translated, you can say it like that. The higher the number, the warmer the mattress. Basically what the manufacturers of these sleeping pads are doing is that they are indicating to you how well the sleeping pads are insulating your body from the ground. This particular sleeping pad that I am totally in love with is from Thermarest, Thermarest Pro self-inflating pad is made in Ireland. This one has an R value of 4.4. A sleeping pad can go up to much higher values like over 6 or 7. If you look up closely here you can see different symbols for each season of the year. You can use it in uh, pretty much every season. Maybe not in the deepest of winters and in very very cold temperatures. Other than that it's going to do a great job. But don't forget, even if you are buying the best sleeping mattress in the world, if you are not using a good insulating layer between the ground and the bottom of your sleeping pad, you are going to lose a lot of heat. Because a lot of heat it's lost through the back of your body, through the bottom of the sleeping pad. Now we are coming to yet another very very important piece of your equipment which is the sleeping bag. This is at least as important as your sleeping mattress because this is your blanket so to say. Outside in the outdoors you actually try to mimic the conditions that you have in your own bed, in your own bedroom at night. A sleeping bag doesn't necessarily have to be expensive, yet it is again important to remember and to think for yourself in which conditions are you going to be camping. This sleeping bag is from the same company like my tent. It is not necessarily an expensive brand, but it doesn't mean it's not a good brand. Again, it's important to know in which conditions you are going to use your gear. I knew that I am going to be in the middle of the summer camping outside, Therefore, this did a very good job. Matter of fact, let me open it for you right now and show you what I mean. Usually on all sleeping bags, you should find something like this. It's a bit washed away here, as you can see. But basically what this one is saying is that if the temperatures are between 45 degrees Fahrenheit and 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 7 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius, you are going to be in a comfortable range. That means you are going to feel cozy and warm inside this sleeping bag. This one on the other hand, it shows the limit, 5 degrees Celsius. Which means if you have inside your tent the temperature, right? 5 degrees Celsius, that means that you are not going to be feeling comfortable inside the tent. You are going to most likely freeze. 
they are saying that you feel comfortable within this temperature range but if you are a person who is freezing up fast you might consider to buy yourself a bit warmer bag when purchasing a sleeping bag i would rather look at the comfortable range than the limit or the extremes because you really want to feel actually comfortable right and if you are a person like me who likes to twist and turn and change positions during the night you should definitely consider buying yourself a sleeping bag which is a bit broader wider and not too tight on your body because if you are going to turn onto one side during your sleep you are going to move completely together with the entire sleeping bag and that's just uncomfortable that's my personal opinion okay now that we spoke about the most important items that i'm also going to put them once again here on the screen we are jumping now to the bonus items depends if you need them or not i definitely do one of them is a pillow it weighs almost nothing it's really feather light it helps me a lot to have a good night rest because i need to have something underneath my head matter of fact i'm going to open it for you to show it this one is uh filled with material inside but you can as well buy yourself a inflating pillow and you're also good to go now let's move on to another piece of equipment which is really going to help you with your sleep you might like to have quiet surroundings when you want to sleep and ambient noises are not the thing for you so if you want to block out pretty much everything use some earplugs i have here two different earplugs from the company hair protect and they are my favorite let's go on and more into detail about why they are so good this is the first type of earplugs that i would recommend you to use they are quite innovative i can say they are really effectively blocking the ambient noises i am a person who likes to have it pretty quiet when i want to sleep especially outdoors let's have a look at them you find inside a small black etui very stylish very nice and you can just pop it open just like that by pressing it together and inside we have first a small black case and when you open it you find two earplugs with both foam tips that's what you have first left side and the right side there you go this is with a memory foam tip as next we have different types of earplugs it's a small case, two different earplugs with different tips. These are silicon tips and not memory foam tips. They work in a bit different way, but I can tell you a couple of things about them. The silicon tips are pretty neat. You have two different sizes, as you can see, and you can push it inside your ear canal, twist until you feel that is fitting properly inside your ear that's pretty much to it there is not uh, rocket science of how to use them and then we are coming to the foam tips which are my favorite because i like to squeeze this memory foam tip and when it expands then my ear is completely blocked from any other noise that comes from the outside so they are very effective they can reduce up to 22 decibels in noise which is a lot especially when you're in the tent at night and you are hearing all these noises around you that is really making a huge huge difference you find as well in this small box of course different tips in case you lose some of them or they get damaged or too dirty or whatever I mean you can still wash them but if you want to replace them you have here different foam tips and different silicon tips as next we have the ultra soft moldable silicon earplugs they are also from the company here protect they are waterproof and also moldable and you can use them as well when you are swimming when you are camping when you are sleeping or simply if you just want to block any disturbing noise from the outside let's have a look inside we have a plastic case with eight pairs of silicon earplugs and you can use them for swimming for showering sleeping camping however you want and in the box we have as well extra pairs so the same ones and you can see when i am squeezing them they can be shaped the way you want let's see how they feel like let's put the second one in i can barely hear myself <laughs> they are really good it's it's awesome yeah so i can see the effectiveness of all three types of earplugs the silicon moldable tips or the foam tips or the silicon tips are all 
very good. I prefer the foam tips, but that's just me. You have to try them out to see which one fits you the best. Now I pretty much showed you the main important camping gear that you should have with you, but a couple of little items might make your life even more comfortable and easier, especially your night. Another thing I like to have in the tent with me at all times during the night, it's a bottle of water. Because I wake up in the night a couple of times maybe, and if I would like to have a sip of water, I just like to have the water just there and not having to look all over the place where it might be, maybe turn on the headlamp or the phone light, and that kind of disturbs your night rest if you get what I'm saying. You remember how I told you before that you should try to mimic your sleeping routine that you already have home. Well, to that one, Maybe, in your case, it belongs to have your phone with you, watch a movie or watch a couple of videos on your phone before you go to sleep, or maybe you like to have a cup of tea before you go to sleep, or maybe read a book. Another factor that you should not forget are the light sources. It's nothing more disturbing than a bright light shining through your tent, exactly in your eyes, and you cannot fall asleep. Therefore, it's either you are using a face mask, or you put a t-shirt over your eyes, or you simply go into a place before you go to sleep where you know that there are no light sources that might disturb you during the night. Try to do that to give yourself that feeling that you are completely in your normal habitat, which is home, in your own bed. Adding up all these little things are really going to give you that extra touch of um, comfortable feeling, of safety, and of your routine, what you are used to. So if you like to have a better night rest and fall asleep much easier, use all this camping gear and extra things that I told you about and I promise you are going to have an easier time. So now we have just covered the physical factors, the physical aspects that you need to have a more comfortable night in the tent. But now we are coming to the last part of this video, which is as well very important and includes the psychological factors. You might have now all the gear that you need, but there is something missing, which is your inner comfort, your mental comfort. I also noticed personally, when I traveled with the bicycle for three months in a row through Europe, and I slept almost every night in the tent, that in the beginning I felt quite uneasy and I couldn't really explain myself why am I feeling that way. Well, you might also have that feeling when you are home, you are secure, you are safe, you have walls all around you, but out there you are just in the tent and just a thin tarp is between you and the outside world. So one of the psychological factors is the safety, your own safety, how you're feeling like, in which environment you are. Are there any animals or any people? Are you afraid of something? Am I in the right place here? Is anything going to happen to me? So you have to do what works out for you. If you know that you need people around you, Try to camp it with someone together or in a camping site where you are surrounded by people. But if you are more like me and you like to be all by yourself and you like to wild camp, try to go in a very remote area where you are sure that no one is really going to come in the night disturbing you. Another psychological factor might only just be simply the fact that you are not home, that you are out there and you are not used to that. It's just a habitual problem that you are facing and you just have to give it time, that's all. I know not many people speak about these uh, psychological factors, but I think they are a very important point in uh, making yourself feel comfortable outdoors. Okay, my friends, so with that being said, we reached now the end of this video. I really, really hope that this advice is going to help you having a much better sleeping experience in the tent and an altogether better camping experience. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I am gladly answering them. And I am as well going to put some links in the description below from the products that I am using. If you like to check other videos on my channel, please do so. I would appreciate that. Subscribe if you like. So with that being said, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.